Should employers be allowed to monitor and police the social media posts and pages of their employees? Is there a First Amendment right if a company decides to tell an employee that your posts are unacceptable and misaligned with the goals and objectives of the company? That's a topic that many of us are confronted with, with everyone having a social media page and using this social media page to be vocal about their political, social, personal views. And so we're going to take a deep dive in whether or not companies are allowed to curtail the speech of their employees. In which respects is it appropriate? In which, ex in which respects does it violate First Amendment freedom of speech rights? We're going to discuss in this video. But before we get into the topic, this is The Legal Code. And on this channel, we discuss a wide range of legal topics, whether that's to get your small business up to the next level, legal pitfalls, celebrity shenanigans who are confronted with a legal crisis. We discuss it all here so that you can be informed and knowledgeable about different legal topics. And if you like that sort of thing, please don't forget to like and subscribe and share with anyone else you think will find value. Also, I have some legal consultation slots available. So if you would like the opportunity to speak with a real life lawyer to go over any legal pitfalls that your small business is confronted with, whether that's trademark, copyright, should you trademark? Is it the right time to trademark and to copyright? Uh, legal pitfalls, things to avoid, whether you need insurance, blind spots for your business, we discuss in the consultation. So if you're interested, there is a link in the description box. Now, without further ado, let's get into this topic. Should employers be allowed to monitor and police the statements of employees vis-a-vis -vis their social media account? Let's get into it. So in Dallas, Texas, a former Southwest Airlines flight attendant was fired after sparring with her union president over abortion rights and other issues and just won a $5.1 million jury verdict. So here's the backstory. Charlene Carter, who had worked at Southwest Airlines for over 20 years, was fired in March of 2017 after complaining to the union, the union president about flight attendants being able to attend a pro-abortion march in Washington, D.C., where more than 500,000 people were protesting President Donald Trump's positions on abortions and other issues. So it was a pro-choice rally. Carter, as an employee of Southwest Airlines, was a member of the Transportation Workers Union, TWU, or Local 556. So she paid union dues, even though it ran tangential to her uh, being in agreement with the union's position on abortion rights. She backed out of the union back in 2013 because she did not like that the union was supporting pro-choice movements and the pro-choice rhetoric. So she was very vocal and using social media to voice her displeasure with the union until she was fired in 2017. On her social media posts, she sent Facebook message to the union president with purported aborted fetuses to Audrey Stone, the union president, uh, saying that she was despicable, that she didn't like that the union was supporting pro-choice yada 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 so she was using her private media page to send these messages to the union president according to court documents the airline said that it fired carter because the post on her facebook page in which she could be identified as a southwest employee i guess she had on a uniform at the time that she sent these private messages to the union president audrey stone and that the messages violated the company's policies on bullying and the use of social media so the airline fired her so they claim because because they interpreted her conduct to be that of bullying another co-worker through social media. Now Carter complained to the union president about flight attendants being able to go to this march in support of the pro-choice movement and believed that there were schedule changes to accommodate those who wanted to support this movement. 
Carter was not happy that the union dues were being used to attend an abortion rally and wasn't happy that flight attendants who wanted to attend were being accommodated with schedule changes and whatever else accommodations that the company was allowing. And so because of this, Carter sent the Facebook messages to the union president. And again, there was uh, aborted fetuses in the messages to Audrey Stone and so this is how the lawsuit ensued. And she even called the union president despicable and said that she would be voted out of office. Stone reported uh, Carter to the company and which the company ended up firing Carter for violating the company's policies on bullying and the use of social media. The case went to a jury where the jury found that the Southwest Airlines unlawfully discriminated against Carter because of her sincerely held religious beliefs. Carter and the union did not fairly represent her and retaliated against her for expressing her religious views on the private forum. Now, just to be clear, First Amendment rights, whether that's freedom of speech, freedom of expression, freedom of religion, limit only governmental actors, not private actors or private companies. So a federal or state employee has the protection against their governmental employer vis-a-vis -vis the Constitution. Now, for a private employee, Title VII protects private employees from from constitutional violations regarding their First Amendment rights. So Title VII makes it unlawful for an employer to discharge an individual or fire an individual or otherwise to discriminate against an individual employee with respect to compensation, terms and conditions of employment, uh, privileges of employment because of an individual's religion. The term religion includes all aspects of religious observance and practices as well as belief. There's no argument as to whether or not it's a bona fide religion or it's recognized religion. No, as long as there's a religion, the employer has to demonstrate tolerance of that religion unless an employer demonstrates that he or she is unable to reasonably accommodate that employee's religious observance or practices without undue hardship on the employer. So in all essence, an employer must tolerate the religious practices and observance of their employees. There's no argument as to whether or not it's a real religion, as long as um, it's not causing an undue hardship on the employer. Undue hardship, there's no real legal standard. It just has to be reasonable within the scope of employment of the employer, in which case they must tolerate, whether it's days off or working alternative schedule or perhaps working on a certain floor the co the company must um, employ some level of reasonable accommodation to accommodate for the religious practices of the employee and cannot retaliate um, as a way to censor or limit that employee's ability to practice his or her religion. So we're talking about abortion. So how did we get to the topic of religious and whether or not the company has to tolerate, like how is religious tolerance in the workplace and reasonable accommodations in the workplace have anything to do with an employee being fired because of her social media posts? Well, to establish the case for religious discrimination under Title VII, the plaintiff or the employee must present evidence that she had a bona fide religious belief, her beliefs conflicted with the requirement of her employment, and her employer was informed of her religious belief, and she suffered religious she suffered adverse employment action for failing to comply with the conflicting employment requir requirement so how did charlene win this because again she was arguing about abortion rights not about her religion well Charlene shared her religious beliefs about pro-life her, and her pro-life position. Charlene then discovered that Local 556, the union that represented all of the Southwest employees, were attending a march in support of something that ran tangential to Charlene's religious beliefs and activities. So in accordance with her religious beliefs and practices, 
boxes. Charlene was simply posting videos and uh, making statements on her personal page about her religious beliefs, which were uh, in opposition to abortion and sent these videos to the union president opposing abortion and again expressing her religious beliefs. Based on this post, Southwest made their determination to fire the plaintiff in what seemed like a reaction to her pro-life position and not as a response that her message were inappropriate to the union president. We know this because Charlene alleges that before her termination at a fact-finding meeting that Southwest Airlines held, she notified Southwest of her religious belief and explained why she sent the Facebook post to Stone. Because Southwest responded in in termination automatically, this violated Title VII anti-discrimination provisions when the company terminated her for her religious beliefs and for engaging in the religious practicing of sharing religious beliefs on abortion with the union president on her personal Facebook page. The way Southwest Airline handled this was totally inappropriate with the immediate termination and not allowing a reasonable accommodation for her to voice her religious views. Their reaction was tantamount to retaliation and thus a violation of Title VII, her right to express her religious views. How should they have handled it? They should have said, Charlene, we support your religious views and if there's anything we could do to accommodate that, if you would like to attend a pro-life rally. We will provide scheduling accommodation just like we have provided for those who would like to attend a pro-choice rally. Would you like us to do that? That's what they should have said. Then they should have said, your messages to the union president are inappropriate and threatening. And although we want you to be able to express your religious views, you're not allowed to harass and antagonize the union president. Uh, through Facebook or any other means. This has nothing to do with your religious views, but you cannot use Facebook to harass the union president as well as other employees who have views that are different from yours. Because just like you have the right to be vocal and express your religious positions, you cannot do that to curtail the rights of other people. That is what Southwest Airlines should have done. Why didn't they do that? Because of hubris and thinking that they're dealing with a small fish and how dare she go up against us. That is all it was. This was an example of a big corporation thinking that they can squash the views of one of their employees and that employee would never go up against to fight with them in a, in a legal battle because it's costly, it's time consuming, expensive, and it's exhausting. But the jury found it differently. The jury found that the Southwest Airline violated her First Amendment rights to be able to practice her religion and that she was fired as a result of expressing her religious beliefs. I think Charlene was inappropriate with sending these messages to the union president. Of course, you can use your Facebook page to be vocal about your political, social, whatever your views may be. But that comes up against you're not allowed to harass and intimidate other employees using that platform. That is all Southwest Airlines needed to have done. That is all they needed to have done. Stop sending harassing comments. And if there's something that we could do to accommodate your religious views, we should have done that. Also, Southwest was erroneous in earmarking money and funds to support pro-choice rallies and neglecting to earmark money to support pro-life rallies. They should have had um, a more democratic process. If there's a political campaign that you wish to partake in, whether that's pro-life, pro-choice, or whatever it may be, we will accommodate that if it's in line with your First Amendment right to practice and exercise your religion. That is what Southwest Airlines should have done. But again, they jumped the gun and decided to terminate her because they thought she was a nuisance. They thought that her statements were a nuisance and they thought that they could intimidate her. 
and that's why it's costing them five million dollars and i think although people might have differing views regarding abortion rights i think we do want to allow as much freedom of speech even if it runs tangential to what we believe we don't want to quelch freedom of speech for those beliefs and ideas that we don't agree with because there will come a time where there's ideas and beliefs that we agree with that should be spoken about that should be vocalized that then our views will be quelled so that's why it's important to allow a balance of exercising freedom of speech up until a certain point where it's not harassing another individual we don't want to create a environment of censorship in the workplace as well as outside of the workplace. Yeah, I know South, the social media is like the wild, wild west where people get to say all sorts of nasty and disparaging things on the internet towards other people that are disgusting, deplorable, despicable. Outside of that, people should be allowed to express themselves freely. Outside of sending disparaging and dangerous remarks and threatening remarks to other individuals on social media, people should be able to exercise their freedom of speech as long as it's not curtailing the voices and the views of other people. This is a healthy society. This is an, a marker of a democratic society where people could say what they want to say within limits, of course, like I said, without, it, without retaliation or censorship. But let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know if you have experience of your employer saying that you can't make certain posts that run tangential to the employee's views on, on certain social topics. Um, do you have any experience with that? Do you, does your company have, I mean, I think back in the day there was a policy where you could not have social media posts or people kept their social media posts private in order that the employer would not be aware of their positions on certain things. But right now, I don't think companies are doing that level of censorship. They can't keep up with it. But let me know your thoughts on this topic. Do you think uh, Charlene's victory is a step in the right direction as it relates to censorship, especially in a time where so many forums and platforms are being censored, where freedom of speech is being censored. Let me know what your thoughts and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.